Let us come back to the real number system once again. Uh, we have observed that uh, R with its field structure and its ordering makes uh, a complete ordered field. Completeness we have defined in terms of order complete, order property, I mean order completeness. And now let us concentrate and uh, try to understand what exactly the idea behind it or in detail we will try to discuss it now. Uh, in fact, um, we have observed some notions about uh, rationals too. Rationals are uh, is an ordered field which you are expecting that is not going to be a complete ordered field. See from the polynomial side if you are looking at x square equals 2 is not going to have a solution in Q. But what we are expecting now is that there exists a solution in R. So solvability of this equation can be done very well in R. Once the solution exists for x square equals 2, algebraically we can write the positive square root as positive root as square root of 2. It satisfies that equation. So the existence of root 2 is in question now. So how to do that? Can we expect a nice theorem in, in this respect that you are trying to look at now? So let us uh, formally state the theorem. There exists a positive real number x such that x square equals 2. It ideally say that, says that R has a solution inside. So how to uh, go along this proof? The, the basic ideas, the fundamentals what you are going to use uh, starts from the completeness obviously and some techniques from usual algebra with uh, binomial expansions we need. Then obviously this uh, Archimedean property will help us. And the basic properties are only we need but it is a very beautiful proof you can see that. So we have to get a solution for the equation x square equals 2. For uh, to manipulate these kind of ideas we will start or begin with a set S which I am going to define it as those real numbers S in R which are obviously non-negative and whose square is up to 2. I will be just looking all the real numbers I mean non-negative real numbers right to 0 I mean but I want cross whose square is going to be 2 that is what up to 2 I can go for the squaring ideas. So such a set I am going to make use of this the entire for the help of the entire proof of the theorem. L look at the set or un understand the set very well. Here it is given the square is uh, those real numbers whose square is up to 2. Now what you are at first we will observe that this is a non-empty subset. In fact it is a bounded above set. Then supremum property can be used well. These are the first things what you have to mention. Why it is non-empty? Why S is non-empty? Obviously 1 is inside S yes, because 1 square is less than 2. Now is it bounded above? So it is a non-empty set. Uh, now it is, is it bounded above? Yes. Can you give an upper bound? 2 can be given as an upper bound. It cannot move beyond 2. Why is it so? Suppose uh, T is greater than 2. What will happen? Then obviously t square will be greater than 4 which says that t is not available in s. Take the contrapositive now of this statement. So you will be getting t is in s implies t is less than or equal to 2 which says what? 2 is an upper bound. So we have a bounded above non-empty subset of real numbers. So what is next? Completeness you have to use it. Supremum property you have to use it. So it has a supremum. S has a supremum. So just call that by S. That is the next thing what you are going to look. So uh, our uh, S was, uh, remember what is our S is? S is 
those real numbers non negative real numbers whose square is strictly less than 2 now supremum x is 10 that supremum we are going to call it as small x so define small x as the supremum of s that is the least upper bound for this set s yes. it exists now remember x is obviously greater than 1 it is clear in fact uh, we have some geometrical intuition now uh, our candidate this is going to be the candidate the right candidate which is going to satisfy our original equation x square equals to that is what you are expecting at this is our expectation the right candidate we are going to catch hold so uh, obviously is not negative it is in fact uh, x is greater than 1 also so it is less than 2 also the whole thing what you are going to get so at least it's going to happen so anyway it is going to be greater than but somewhere here it will appear up to that is uh, clear for us now uh, you have to finally you have to launch that this is exactly going to be giving the candidate means x square is exactly going to be 2 x square is a real number you wanted to prove that it is 2 so one uh, why don't you use trichotomy to prove this so to prove this we look at the other two, two possibilities there are three possibilities <coughs> either x square less than 2 or x square greater than 2 or equal to 2 that is what trichotomy teaches us teaches so just uh, try to bar the possibilities of x square is less than 2 and x square is greater than 2 once you are just barring these two possibilities it concludes that x square must be 2 that is our uh, methodology here so take a case by case we will assume the case one as x square is less than 2 or square is less than 2 means 2 minus x square is a non negative uh, real number that you have to use it it is then 0 you have to use it so that is the first thing what you are going to look at so case one we will assume x square is less than 2 how will you say that this is this case is not at all possible our idea is nothing other than that the x is actually the supremum of s you remember what is s so what we will do is it is the supremum of s mean it is an upper bound and it is going to be the least of all upper bounds now what we are trying to look at in this case is we will produce a real number greater than x and belonging to s that actually makes contradiction a real number greater than x which is available in s if you are trying to say it means x plus a little bit is going to be the member we are going to get it that little bit we will estimate through 1 by n some 1 by n so uh, ideally we will try to find out some natural number n so that 1 by n can be made uh, as much as small as you like some number some real small real number at our convenience we will get and we say that or we try to show that this x plus 1 by n is going to be in s so what what does it prove then x plus a little bit of a quantity is in s x is the supremum of s that is a contradiction so x cannot be an upper bound that is the problem is there so the question uh, now subsumes to the thing that is such an n is possible that is a natural number n can be chosen in such a way that x plus 1 by n is available in s so how to look at some member is in s what are You just look at the definition what it says see our s it was nothing other than that by definition it was those real numbers obviously non negative and uh, uh, whose square is less than 2 this was our definition for s so you have to look at its square that is x plus 1 by n square you have to look at definitely but binomial expansion give x square plus 2x into 1 by n plus 1 by n square 1 by n square is a positive quantity more than that 1 by n uh, n is a natural number 1 by n square is less than 1 by n they are all natural numbers right so just um, the right hand side you can make it still bigger by by substituting 1 by n square to 1 by n because 1 by n is a strictly bigger quantity than 1 by n square so i will be getting the inequality the right hand side as x square plus 2x by n plus 1 by n i can replace now some clubbing i can make it here so right hand side x square plus 
in a handy mode i will write 1 by n into 2x plus 1 this is what it is going to come so x plus 1 by n square is going to be less than that is ultimate story now x plus 1 by n square that is going to be less than x square plus 1 by n times 2x plus 1 Uh, now the question is, um, the, see here, can you make it n uh, sufficiently large so that 1 by n can be sufficiently small? The whole quantity here, I mean the right hand side, uh, can be ap appropriately make it uh, in such a way that x plus 1 by n is in available in s. Is such a thing is possible? So we will uh, try to look at this inequality again. So what you have to do here is the right hand side is something x square plus 1 by n into 2x plus 1. So this can, this quantity you have to concentrate that is 1 2x plus 1 by n. This quantity you have to be concentrate. 2x plus 1 over n uh, that we will make it less than 2 minus x square. Advantages are there. We will, I will uh, say it again. We will, if you choose an n in n such that 2x plus 1 by n, this is 2 minus uh, less than 2 minus x square. Two, is such a uh, choice is possible? That is the first question. What is the use of it? That is the next thing. See, first of all, it, it is possible. You can choose n sufficiently large so that this quantity, this left hand side quantity, is strictly less than 2 minus x square. So remember this, um, you can simply rewrite this inequality as 2x, uh, see, uh, uh, I will rewrite it's 1 by n style, 1 by n is equal to uh, 2 minus x square by 2x plus 1, right, but 2 minus x square by 2x plus 1, can you make n sufficiently large so that this holds, so remember x is greater than 1. So this is positive. We are working with uh, x square is less than 2 case. Case 1 is that. So x square is less than 2 means 2 minus x square is positive. So you have a positive quantity on the right hand side. So some positive quantity is there. By Archimedean property, a choice is possible for n so that this 1 by n is less than 2 minus x square. That is what you are trying to look at. So such a choice is possible. But what is the advantage of this such a thing then? Whenever you are making like that, go back to your aim. I mean, 1 by x plus 1 by n whole square, you are trying to manipulate. And uh, see, this is less than x square and second quantity is 2 minus x square. See, uh, what was our aim actually? Uh, what, we have proved that 1 by, let me repeat it again, 1 by n is a n, choice of n is possible with 1 by n less than 2 minus x squared by 2x plus 1. This was possible for me. Then if I am looking back my old inequality, which, uh, uh, which was in the style x plus 1 by n square is less than x square plus, this was the original thing, right? Here I am working with this 2 minus uh, 2x plus 1, etc. like that. So basically what I need was to look at some estimate for this 2x plus 1 by n quantity and I wanted to make this is less than 2 minus x square. That is what I was trying. It was possible now. So, which means after selecting this n, I can make the whole thing x plus 1 by n square or whole square is going to be less than x square plus this quantity I have made it now appropriately less than 2 minus x square. So, I can replace it. So, it is still bigger. By Archimedean property, this is guaranteed. But this says the right hand side is just 2. Now, what is the advantage now? So, it says that x plus 1 by n square is less than 2. I may write it as star, uh, mark it as star because it is important now. I was just looking at x plus 1 by n, this x plus a little bit quantity square is less than 2. But that was the whole need 
I need, uh, that is the whole thing. I was in need to say that x plus 1 by n is in my s. Whose square I have to look at, it has to be less than 2. Such a quantity, no negative quantity should be in s. So I have gone through the things. I have a candidate which is x plus 1 by n. That real number whose square is less than 2. So it is belonging to s. It is strictly greater than x which is a contradiction for the definition of x. x was originally the supremum of s. It contradicts that. So case 1 is ruled out. That What is case 1? x square less than 2 cannot be possible in this case. So what about the other case? Very similar and analogous argument I can make use of. More or less the same spirit. So we will consider the second case, case 2. Which actually consisting of x square is greater than 2. Remember always x is the supremum of my set s. In this case, what we are going to look at is, uh, we will find out a natural number m now in such a way that x minus 1 by m, x a little bit smaller than that, is also an upper bound. So this is also going to be an upper bound with you. It also makes you uh, reach us, I mean, make you into a contradiction to the fact that x is supremum of s. x supremum of s means it is a, not only an upper bound, it is going to be least of all. So if you are finding out a number which is smaller than that, that will prohibit the thing. So that small fellow, again, an epsilon fellow, something like that, x minus a little bit, that you will try to say that it is also going to be an upper bound of s. So again, we have to depend on our binomial kind of things. So to say something about that candidate, you have to look at its square, so which obviously give us x square minus 2x by m plus 1 by m square. So uh, right hand side if I am looking at 1 by m square is a positive quantity. So if I am just neglecting it, this will be still strictly greater. So this will be greater than x square minus 2x by m. So here once again this part I have to look at. So if I can choose m so large in such a way that the 2m by m, oh, sorry, uh, 2x by m quantity, this quantity if I am making it less than x square by 2, I can play the same game because here x square minus 2, I can push it here, then I can manipulate. So what ultimately is going to happen is, uh, this implies um, something like a, the right hand side is x square uh, minus, see, I will just replace it by x square minus 2 again, right, still bigger, so x square minus x square minus 2 I can replace, so it will be still bigger. So the whole quantity is again bigger. If I am able to find out an m, so that the left, this quantity is less than that, still a smaller quantity I will replace, I mean greater quantity means again it, if I am substituting x square minus 2 on the right hand side appropriately, it will still smaller. That is what I am going to use it. So once I am proving that, uh, this right hand side is very handy now, this actually says that x minus 1 by m whole square is greater than 2. But x minus 1 by m square is greater than 2. That is enough. That is again makes contradictions. A smaller quantity whose square is greater than 2. So it again affects, uh, really affects the other side. That is what you are trying to look at. But is such a choice is possible? Can we choose it that, like that? Again, you have to depend on Archimedean property. But basically what we need, see the equation is, uh, what you are trying to look at is 2x by m. This fellow I have to look at. 2x by m less than x square minus 2. Such a thing it should be possible with some choice of m. So let me work out on that. It is very easy in some sense as before. See, uh, Equivalently, what I have to do, to, this was the inequality, 2x by m is less than x square minus 2, I am expecting, which equivalently x square minus 2 by 2x, can I make it uh, greater than 1 by m, that is 1 by m is less than such a quantity, so 1 by m less than x square minus 2 by 2x, is, is it possible or not, that is what is the question x is again positive, 
we are working with the case x square is greater than 2 which says that x square minus 2 is positive so this whole quantity is a positive quantity now so it's just a choice i mean whether m is chosen in such a that 1 by m is less than a positive quantity again Archimedean property will guarantee that so such a choice is possible and that choice will allow us to say that x minus 1 by m whole square is in fact greater than 2 so we have a real number right x minus uh, 1 by m whole square that itself is greater than 2 right so that is again a contradiction to the fact that x is the supremum of s so which uh, serves two cases both these two cases you have to exclude so in the trichotomy case x square less than 2 as well as x square greater than 2 all such things all the two cases are barred which ideally says that x square the supremum of this set, is, set was x and that x square is exactly equal to 2 so which settles the problem so we have the right candidate and we have proved that such a real number exists with our system so the proof is over so once you are having uh, x square equals 2 as a solution in r uh, that is a positive square root exists it's a solution was positive so that positive square root by the definition it was a unique fellow so we'll write it as this notation radical notation positive square root of 2 or conveniently 2 to the power 1 by 2 also you can write it as so such a solution exists see once two such a positive solution is there field axioms will give uh, additive inverse also will give satisfy that but this is a generality also if you are uh, not only with the 2, you can work with the 3 or 5 or anything like that. So, the whole um, moral of the story is that once a positive real number is given for you, then there exists a unique x such that whose square is exactly going to be a. So, in such a situation, we will write this as the positive square root of a in this style or a to the power 1 by a. Oh, these things are possible for us. So, existence of this square root is there for every I mean, unique way in a non negative real number. In fact, 0 means 0 only. Now, uh, this was for finding out square roots. So, in, uh, you don't have to reserve on x square equals to the polynomial equation. You can work with x cubed equals some number also, 2 or anything like that, cube root fourth roots, fifth roots or anything like that, one can work with that. So, in fact, uh, more generally one can say if A is any positive real number, then positive nth root also is existing in such a manner. Very similar kind of argument one can make it and existence can be proved, but uh, the whole proof has to be reframed in such a way. Binomial expansion you have to use it well, all other estimates you have to use it well and we have to establish in that case is the uh, nth root so we will write nth root like this or a to the power 1 by such a real number exists positively that is also uh, that also can be proved it by manipulating the proof so existence of the roots positive square roots comes into a, a nice answer it's going to have it allocates some space i mean which actually gives the solution in the system r so that is what completeness is going to be given here there are some more comments or remarks I have to make it. See, this was about R. You have the solution in R and R was the supreme of the particular set. We are working on R, remember that. But if you are just changing the situation like this, see, go back to the proof and remember your S like this. Instead of that, if you are working on Q, what will happen? And uh, this very similar set you can manufacture. There is nothing wrong in it. You can make that uh, by definition I am making a T which consists of now all not all real numbers all rational real uh, numbers in q and that is rational numbers which are non negative whose square is less than 2 i can work with this set i can see that it is bounded above and so many things like that but then uh, you can ask about supremum of t 
supremum of t you can find it out but not in q that is the thing so what it says you have a solution here in q that q is not a complete ordered field there are gaps but r is a complete ordered field this is what the whole moral is so it fundamentally gives the difference between q and r so that settles one of the pre, uh, basic aims or fundamentals of analysis let us look at more concretely the impacts of this uh, existence of solutions and all systems thank you